Ryan actually understands war and things because he plays all the games. So I feel like he would do a better Malthoon, whereas I would do a better chaos screaming and hope for the <laughs> chaos best. Chaos screaming? <laughs> I mean, that's pretty fair. That's, though. A, valid, that's a valid strategy. <laughs> valid cons. <laughs> Welcome to the Tabletop Travel Guide, the podcast where we explore fictional worlds and civilizations right from the comfort of our own table. I'm Ryan, and last week in Charles' campaign, I feel like I'm better understanding my kineticist character. Yeah. I'm like leaning more into that ranged blaster role and realizing I cannot do a Boston accent. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Ryan doing a Boston accent has been fantastic. It's been just mostly me talking, but like angrily. It wasn't good. <laughs> he didn't even try with the R's. Boston. There's no R in Boston. Boston. Why did I you pick that word? I don't know. Go to the car. The car. He didn't and the even f- try. There it is. <laughs> Something's he, in the car. Didn't even try with the R's. Proceeds to say a word that doesn't have an R in it. <laughs> Look, I'm not the accent guy, okay? <laughs> Nor the spelling man. <laughs> the pronunciation guy. It's not me. You know you have a Boston accent when you say khakis like car keys. Khakis. There we go. We're getting oh, better. There you okay. go. Nice. Okay. okay uh, I'm Tyler, and in Charles's campaign, I realize that uh, somebody's going to have to cast Enlarge on my little small poppet barbarian to grapple some huge creatures. <laughs> we fought some ants that were huge, and I was like, oh, I can't grapple these things. Please, somebody enlarge me. <laughs> Which I'm hoping we're not fighting huge stuff all the time. Yeah, it's fine. Sam. He did name the campaign Titan Sam. <laughs> Titan! I'm not sure no, what but there's we like expected. the giant like Titans walking around yeah. the setting. I don't know. That just makes me think everything's gonna be. Mm. Well, either way, Sam. we'll need Charles to do a lore guide on his setting. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, that'd oh. be good. I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take Witch as the Freaker type for that one. I was popping around between patrons and one of them I could take would be arcane and then I could get enlarged. I was also looking at the divine one to get healing stuff so mm. I haven't decided. Yeah. Okay. So That's we need fair. to decide if we would rather have more healing or if we want Tyler to be able to be large. It's fine. I mean, I can still hit, hit stuff. It's not a huge deal. And then I'm Sam and I finally decided three sessions in what my archetype is going to be <laughs> for said character um, and then I died in battle and it was sad. Yep. Oh, that was funny though. When I like grabbed your character. Oh yeah, that rolled, was like rolled, <laughs> rolled to grab to the fireman's pickup and ran. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh no, I've gone down. <laughs> I learned I needed friendly toss to chuck her out of combat. We're learning as we go. It's great. Yeah, yeah make it work. Yeah. So of course, quick, quick little bit of housekeeping first. Always reminders: you can support us on Patreon. There's a link in the show notes, and also a page on our website, or you can search us at Tabletop Travel Guide Podcast on Patreon. And then we have the deity draft results, and I'm not going to say this because Woo! I'm biased. Yes. So between the guides and the patrons, we had two wildly different results with our deity draft. For the guides, it was a Cinderella story. Mm-hmm. Against all odds, uh-huh. he was two weeks down yep. in the first two weeks of eliminations. Yep. He was 0.5 points from being mathematically eliminated from (laughs) the draft altogether. But in that final hour, the 11th hour, it turns out that Gorham, the god of war, is the one who is going to be dying. And who should have Gorham, the god of war, on his team? None other than Ryan. Call me the 1980s USA hockey team because I was a miracle. (laughs) Barely pulled it back. The tabletop travel guide story yeah. of Ryan, a rise <laughs> from the bottom to the top, coming to a lifetime network near you. Does We're this gonna... make Tower of the Soviet Union? I don't know. Who, who plays the Soviet Union in this adaptation? I don't know. Sam was doing pretty good, good most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> she was the front runner. Wait, so there were three of us, though, so what are somebody else has to be in there, too. Well, I'm, they... I'm Sweden. I'll say they... Ra- <laughs> That was actually the uh, that <laughs> that game trust. was not the gold medal game. They like beat actually beat a European team for the gold medal. So oh, fair. 
that, that's the other third team. Okay. But yeah, so <laughs> anyway, Ryan went one with one by 0.5 points. Woo, so congratulations Ryan. to you. On the flip side, for the patrons, the competition actually ended a week ago. Uh, you, we talked about it on our last episode. Mm-hmm. But Rod continued and finished the competition with a perfect team. He had Gorm on his pick. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so he was ahead by like almost 10 points. Rod. Yeah. Rod. Yeah, so he sealed the deal. Couldn't have played better. Pitched a perfect game. Good job, Rod. <laughs> Rod, we will be inviting you to Vegas to gamble on things. You may tell us I'm all sorry, of the what? things that we should pick. and oh, then Yeah, yeah the, the yes, prize for this is a trip to Vegas, yeah, right? <laughs> obviously, and then we make you pick all of our bets, and we'll play roulette, and we'll win a bunch of money. Yeah, That's you, done. The prize is you stand over our shoulder while we gamble. <laughs> and tell us, yes, no, bad, <laughs> definitely not. Yes, but... Uh, also, it's not a trip to Vegas. We ain't got that kind of cash. No. Nope. <laughs> but uh, there are some honorable mentions as well, because uh, he picked Gorm, but so did four other patrons. Ooh. So Kaga the Loon, Aqualantern, Kyle M., and Chad all picked Gorm oh, nice job, guys. on their teams. So How many people total did we have participate? I think we had like 17. Oh, no. Nice. Maybe 12. Some amount. He caught me I mean, off that's guard. still like, I feel like pretty good. Yeah. Like, good job, people. That number of people picked. Yeah. The winner so, so good job. thank you again to our patrons for playing with us this was super fun to do the lead up to the war of the immortals mm-hmm. i'm like now thinking what can we do a competition of next i don't know we'll think about it we'll think about it there have yeah. to be other things that we can make wild guesses about yeah. that are coming it's legal in this state so you know we can do that <laughs> guessing wildly uh gambling <laughs> tabletop travel guide becomes a table <laughs> gambling site <laughs> <laughs> anyway yeah, so with that then, I don't think we had any things we misspoke last time. Uh, the only thing that we misspoke, and it was a few weeks ago uh, when we did our Cozy Kingmaker episode, is that we couldn't find the word for people who sell animals, and the term is rancher. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we we, yeah, we I, went I with... like cow, cow finder or we, whatever we settled on. <laughs> you said cattle man. We, cattle ended up, man. We, we ended up settling on drover, an Australian thing that we're not sure whether... <laughs> Afterwards, we looked it up. I'm like, Sam, the word we were looking for was rancher. <laughs> we dumb. <laughs> we real dumb. What's the word? Because it's an improv thing, I am going to forgive us for yes. that. That seems not unreasonable. <laughs> Thank you for forgiving us. Yes, I for- forgive us as the group. Yes. We did zero research and did not know that we needed to come up with job titles for anyway. things. Yes, yeah, anyway. so we're good. Yeah. That being said, then, I think that moves us on to our main event. Yes. And it's not me this time for the weird <laughs> ones. Tyler is the split country man. I am. So we are finishing out Avistan. We are going to be talking about Nermathos and Molthun, our last two countries in Avistan. Oh, man. Yeah. Before we get dive in, uh, for references, I used the book, Nermathos and Molthun, Land of Conflict. Which is not a bad book. It is not a bad At book. At least you had a country pair up where they're already talked about together and not like a country pair up where we were like, <laughs> there's not a lot of information. Yes, we yes. mushed these yeah. together. Yeah. Uh, the, the, this is the easiest one. So I, I got off scot-free. Sorry, Ryan. That's okay. And I also use the wiki. So yeah. Nermathos and Molthun, we are in an area that is west, southwest of Lake and Carthen. Mm-hmm. The two countries kind of wrap around that area. Their Molthun is... West of Druma, so it's kind of parallel with that. Mm-hmm. East of Cheliax, that kind of area. Uh, south of Belkson. So that's kind of what we're looking at in the Isle of Dread. Yes. Before we even get to Nermathos and Molthun as a country, we got to start out thousands of years prior Ooh, way back. in the Fangwood. What is the Fangwood? What is the Fangwood? A forest? Yes. It is a large forest <laughs> that's located <laughs> across northeast Nermathos, and southeast Gravelands, previously Last Wall. Mm. Um, it's split by the Turandel River. So it has what's called the Northern Fangwood and, Fangwood and the Southern Fangwood. We might do a lore guide on the Fangwood at some point because there's a lot of cool stuff there, but I didn't want to put it all. I kept reading more and I'm like, okay, I can't put too much there's here. There's a lot there. But the part that's matter that matters is thousands of years ago, it was settled by elves. Mm, very and, Lord of the Rings. Yep. And there were also, within the area, a bunch of breaches into the first world, and fae filled the forest. Sure. So you had elves living with fae, all that fun stuff, and that's how it went for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Um, Unfortunately, 
it didn't last, as all things don't, as friend of the pod meteor <laughs> showed up <laughs> in Earthfall. <laughs> sure. Ooh. Yes. So most of the Fangwoods elves fled to Kionin and then Soverian. Mm-hmm. Uh, some instead took portals to the first world. In the confusion, some elves and Fae were stranded in the Fangwood, and those elves ended up taking refuge in the Darklands when the orcs showed up. Ooh. Poor bones. Um, over the next few centuries, Kelids, allied with the newly emergent dwarves, remember orcs showed up first, dwarves mm-hmm. showed up after them. They worked with the dwarves to push back the orcs. The, Ke- the Kelids then settled into the Fangwoods, and the Fae that were still there, the Acresiel Court, run by Queen Gendelwyn, um, they made allies with the Kelids. Okay. So again, unfortunately, not, not all good things come to an end when Taldor shows up. Uh, so womp, during womp. one of the armies of exploration, they wanted to explore all over that area. Luckily, the Kelids were able to fend off the Taldans with the help of the Fae spies. And after many hard-fought battles, calm again ensued in the Fangwood for many centuries. So you kind of have a, a tenuous relationship between the Kelids and the Fae and some dwarves. Yeah. All yeah. fighting off the Talden. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for the for, for the most part, the, the Kelids and the dwarves are cool with each other. The Fae and the Kelids are cool with each other. But the real thing comes to a head when the Whispering Tyrant shows up. Sure. So in 3203, he shows up with his orcs, his undead, and routes the Kelids. They reach out to the Fae, but Gendowin sees that the Whispering Tyrant is more dangerous than most, so prioritizes her people's survival and basically abandon the Kelids. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I mean, I'm like, not, good that mm. she wasn't like, ah, yes, Whispering Tyrant, that sounds fine, but also, oh. Yeah, so Kelids are kind of routed. Whispering Tyrant, we've talked about him in like three episodes in a row, uh, so he's doing his thing for years. Shining Crusade comes up. Mm-hmm. They show up, push him out, get him out of the Fangwood, get him out of this whole area, build Lastwall. So the important bit here is that after the Tyrant is defeated and Lastwall is created, not an insignificant number of troops from the war settle in the southern Fangwood that would eventually become Nermathos. Oh, so they just like don't go back yeah. all the way to yeah. wherever they were from. Yeah, they settle in, building towns, whatever. So these are kind of like Knights of Ozum. Cool. These are the kind of seeds of Nermathos. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On the flip side, Cheliacs during the Ever War, they're on their big expansionist time area. Yeah, they want to be like Big Daddy. Yeah, they want to be like Big Daddy like Tolder. So as part of the Ever War, they show up and establish Molthun as a province of Cheliacs. Mm-hmm. And that includes basically up to the border of Last Wall. Um, okay. So, so it includes the whole thing with them? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It includes both countries at the moment is one province of Molthun. Okay. okay. Once Molthun is established as a province, it is basically settled down by Chelish colonists. So they mm. kind of flood in mass to start oh. settling this new area. Okay. So kind of setting the table to what the two countries will end up being, because right now they're still all part of Cheliacs. Nermathos is just a glint on the horizon. <laughs> horizon. In 4606, friend of the pod, Aridin, dies. And soon after, panic ensues everywhere. Of course. As we've talked about many times. Cheliax needs to send Hell Knights to Malthun to put down riots and panic caused by the death. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that didn't work for long because then after the riots have been quelled and everything, Mm -hmm. remember, we have the Chelis Civil War. Yep. At the end of that, House Thrun shows up. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's when Malthun sees its chance and secedes. Okay. Like everybody else... Like Galt and Isker and the other provident provinces are like, oh, devil things? Like, not a fan of that. Sure. So Molthun secedes. Okay. The problem is Ew. the northern side, the artists soon to be known as Nermathos, <laughs> the people living there really do not like the idea of the government of Molthun being its own thing and kind of being just as bad as Cheliax. It's in still very Chelish influenced. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So Molthun, even though they seceded, they're effectively kind of an imperialist mm. mini Cheliax. Okay. Right? So on one side, you had the Knights of Ozum Freedom Fighters. Mm. And then down in Molthun, you had the Chelish people who really liked order. They're just not big fans of devils, but otherwise they're big fans of order. Yeah. 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 So that kind of sets up some conflict. Again, we're still we're still Molthun at the time, but half the half the country is really angry about it. Okay. Before we get into the conflicts, the intra, intra-country intra conflicts. Let's talk about a city called Tamarin. Tamarin is the capital city of the soon-to-be Ner- Nermathos. Okay. It sits on Lake Incarthen, um, and it's kind of a good trade hub. It's on a river, so it 
kind of a good point between different parts of that area. So it's kind of a ramshackle city, which is kind of surprising for what's going to be a nation's capital. Sure. But it's built on piers and pilings over marshlands mm. um, and has like bridges and ramps and causeways and everything's kind of wooden. Like think it's a lot of stuff on stilts. Sure. So once again, if I'm using Lord of the Rings references, that town in the Hobbit movies that they're all hanging out oh. in that's on the water. The Dead Marshes? No, in the Hobbit the gray movies. Marshes? And, and no. It's the one that gets burned down, burned by smog immediately in the second movie. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It's anyway. where they find not Orlando Bloom. Bard. Anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Um, <laughs> and the goofball, like, mayor guy. That yes. It's like yeah. terrible. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Why do I not know the name of that town? Because no, Bard is the guy. Yes, yeah. it is Bard. So anyway, it's kind of like that town. It also has a wall around it for defense. Um, but other than that, it's pretty unremarkable. It's called Lake Town. Oh wow. my gosh. <laughs> anyway, back on track. <laughs> so in 4646, so you're looking, you know, not 14 years after Molthun secedes. Pretty recently. Molthun attacks Tamarin and takes it over. Oh, jerks. Oh. Yeah. It's it's kind of pushing into the nor- northern area, the people who will become Nirmathi. I'm going to keep saying Nirmathos and Molthun, because at this point they're kind of two different sides, mm-hmm. but Nirmathos has not been created Yeah, so I yet. guess like it's weird if you're saying Molthun attacks it and takes it over, but it's technically a city that's already in their territory. <sighs> yeah, it's it's weird. It's like... Is it more like... These are different like provinces and they're supposed to like have loyalty to us, but they don't. So like it's like the crown overseeing. Kind of. It's like you're part of Molthun. You guys need to like be part of Molthun. And they're like, like they're like, Mm -hmm. no, like we're going to do what we want. So they take it over. Mm -hmm. And after a few months, the rebels attempt to take it back. But they realize that because of the wall that they put up there originally, (laughs) Molthun was in a better position to kind of hold in and defend themselves. Ah, uh, yes. The, uh, the, the the total war game issue. Yes. Yes. So what the rebels do instead is they tear down the wall around the city. Oh, boy. And scatter. And then in the dead of night, come back and then start wreaking havoc on the Molthuni. Huh. Nice. And that sets up a pattern. Anytime Molthun shows up or word of an attack happens, all of the army scatters. The citizens surrender and then at the worst times the Nirmathi come in with guerrilla tactics oh dang Mm. so the cycle of violence has started now yes so this is what will then become known as the first offense (laughs) this is the ignition point Mm. of the war that's going to keep going okay okay so the rebels take it back everything's good a year later Molthun takes Tamarin again oh, geez. and holds it for a few weeks, but need, then need to move south as their military is now split by trying to hold that. And also they're getting attacked by Chernasardo rangers from the Fangwood. Oh, boy. Hmm. So they lose Tamarin again. And then everything kind of comes to a head and the war officially starts when Urgal Nirmath, he begins training isolated settlers into an organized rebellion and officially declares war against Molthun. Mm. Okay. So up until now, there's been a lot of kind of like sporadic attacks, some maybe tiny militia, but like nothing terribly organized. Insurrectionary activity. Yes. (laughs) And then Nirmoth Nirmoth shows up and officially declares and gets everybody organized. Okay. Sets things on fire. Yes. So this conflict and this war will become known as the Freedom War to Nirmathos or the Northern Rebellion to (laughs) Molthun. Uh (laughs) Sure. Yes. So now we're going to kind of go through some like important dates in the war and like things that happen. It's th- there's a lot of kind of tit for tat. Now that we're officially in war, I'm going to need you guys to pick sides. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So who wants to be Molthun? Who wants to be Nermathos? Sam, you can pick. I'll give I you first right. I want to be Nermathos because Ryan actually understands war. <laughs> And things because he plays all the games, so I feel like he would do a better Malthoon, whereas I would do a better Chaos Screaming and hope for the <laughs> chaos best. Chaos Screaming? <laughs> I mean, that's pretty fair. That's a, valid, that's a valid strategy. <laughs> valid cons. <laughs> All right, so we're we're fighting the war of northern secession or whatever we're going to call yeah, it. Yeah, you're you're calling this the Northern Rebellion. <laughs> the Northern Rebellion. You guys are wa- fighting freedom! the war for freedom. <laughs> sure. See, that's all I got. <laughs> Just yelling freedom. <laughs> freedom. <laughs> so in forty six forty eight. During kind of the same year, Fangwood Keep, 
is constructed. So Molthini forces kind of build this keep along kind of the war borders. Sure. We're going to have an outpost. Yeah. Forward operating base. Um, See, he understands. Yeah. So basically, I mean, <laughs> kind of that. It's basically a strategic fort. Um, it will change hands several times going forward. Awful. <laughs> yes. Uh, fun fact, though, unrelated. The site of the Fangwood Keep was originally built years and years, hundreds of years earlier by a corrupted elven transmuter named Tessariel as a place for interplanetary travel. Oh. Yeah. What is a transmuter? Because that sounds like a car piece. Uh, it's like a it's like a mage. So like okay. it, it's you know it, like a Voker or oh. diviner transmuter is, is one oh, of the schools is of a magic. Type of yeah. Oh. Okay. That makes um, more sense. Interplanetary travel. Yeah. The the plan failed. However, the attempt to do this failed, <laughs> uh, and so it was abandoned. But then Molthun showed up when they did and said, "Hey, free free stone. <laughs> it's free real estate." Yeah. It, it, they basically <laughs> built it up from that. Anyway, the next year. 4649, Molthun exiles all supporters of Nirmathi secession. Well, obviously, yeah. the best way to run a war is to get rid of everyone who doesn't agree with you. Yeah. Boo. So send them all north to join the army? Yeah. That seems like a questionable decision, actually. <laughs> Ryan, what are you doing over here? <laughs> Thanks. Get out of this country. Go, go up there and fight for your freedom. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like you, please. Get, we're, so we're giving you more reasons not to like us. That same year. The Nirmathi rebels set fire to a Malthuni logging camp. Chaos screaming. Tactic. <laughs> In retaliation, Malthun seizes Tamarin again. Boo. This time holding it for over six months until the battle at Dead Eyes Gulch divides Malthun's attention enough to for Nirmathos to reclaim Tamarin once again. Oh my gosh. We need to like... So in the Tamron count, we are at three Malthun <laughs> oh takeovers. Gosh. Jeez. We need to like... I don't know, build a bigger... We keep getting distracted by like a... Just a second thing. Like, as soon as yes. we can't fight on more than one front. I think right. your army is spread too thin. I feel like we need a bigger army. <laughs> right? Uh, you shouldn't have sent all the... How big uh, is our army? <laughs> you should have conscripted people instead of kicking them <laughs> all out. The, yeah, see, all those people I kicked out, I should have made them into <laughs> soldiers. <laughs> Get back here. So, Dead Eye Gulch, the battle. So this was a week-long battle Ugh. that is considered the Freedom War's bloodiest battle. Ew. Neither side ended up winning. It was one of those everyone died. It kind of sucked. Sure. Uh, but the fact that Tamarin was able to be taken back, I guess, could be considered a win for Nirmathos. So a Nirmathi Pyrrhic victory. Yes. <laughs> so, th <laughs> so then, two years later, 4651, the Malthuni army retakes Tamarin. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> And holds it for less than a week Gosh. in the Battle of Bloody Teeth. <laughs> the Battle of Bloody Teeth. Yes. This was a three-day clash that started when Molthun's general lords basically think the kind of people right under the head of Molthun. Yeah. Um, initiated a battle by making a permanent claim to Tamarin and pushing a large armed force to the city and through the river. What is our chief of... What is our staff doing? <laughs> we now officially say that this city belongs to us. If you put a flag on it, obviously, <laughs> there's no We've been fighting contest. the war for two years, sir. <laughs> right. Uh, the interesting tactic in this battle was what they did is they just mowed down all the trees along the river as they were going Ooh. Uh, to basically stave off guerrilla assaults from oh, the Nirmathi rebels. Oh, okay. So you can't attack from behind trees when there are no trees. That sounds like a bad thing to do when we are close to the Fangwood and the Fae. Bring in the Agent Orange. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, yikes. Uh, however, Druid allies joined <laughs> no! the Nirmathi rebels and pushed the army back out of Tamarin. In this yeah, <laughs> take that. Nature wins. <laughs> Who could have suspected that by attacking nature itself, I would piss off <laughs> the defenders of nature? Yes. <laughs> Come on, Faye. Uh, this is considered actually kind of a turning point in the Freedom War. Uh, it gives Urgal a lot of momentum over the next year and a string of victories. <sighs> so, four years later... Maybe we should just ignore the city. <laughs> we, can, we don't seem to have a lot of success holding it. Let's do something different. Surely there is somewhere else on the coast that you could have a <laughs> trade post. Maybe somewhere else. Have we tried encircling the city? <laughs> Maybe just... I, I think ignore it. We could have ignored the right, city. Right, right. We'll just build a new city right next door and call it Better Tamran. <laughs> Tamran 2. Tamran. It'll be Uptown Tamran. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to pick downtown because Nirmathas is north of Molthin. Ah, there uh, we go. Downtown Tamarin. go downtown Tamarin. <laughs> In 
kind of 4655, the the border between the rebel-held lands and Molthoon kind of solidifies at this point. Okay. Uh, the rebels declare their victory, and that same night, Urgal Nermoth is killed by an unknown assassin. No! Aha! Yes. Uh, and people still are not sure to this day who killed him. Oh. The, I mean, it was The me, assumption it was, it was most likely... <laughs> uh, Rude. Yes. The rebels officially named their new found nation Nermathos in honor of their fallen leader. Hmm. So Gosh. a time where yeah. it's named after a dude after he dies, not but when he it's decides to name it. It's a little better. Yes. He didn't name it that himself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I guess the analog is like if George Washington was killed at the end of the Revolutionary War, we call the country Washington. Mm. Oh, weird. Now we just have a city and a state named after him instead. Yeah. There's probably other like Washingtons as I'm well. Sure there oh is. yeah. After that, everyone lived happily ever after. Peace was had forever. I disagree. End of episode. No. Oh yeah, no one is angry or upset about <laughs> no this one. outcome at all. I feel like no one's happy about the outcome period. Like the main leader got killed. I lost my territory. I mean, I think I'm happy as Nermathos. like we have a border. You have You're a- not in it. You have a mar- you have a martyr like it- yeah. oh yeah I do okay. have a martyr yeah we're gonna yeah. put him on all of the coinage <laughs> yes <laughs> do druids accept <laughs> paper money hmm. uh... good question <laughs> okay now that the countries have been solidified let's take a quick aside to talk through why they have decided to keep fighting afterwards well obviously because they never actually finished the war right right well. <laughs> Yeah, so the Freedom War slash Northern Rebellion has concluded. The conflict is not over. <sighs> but let's take a little bit of time to talk about what they're saying in Molthun and Nermathos. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, Molthun, if you ask why they continue to fight Nermathos after all this time, they say they only seek to reunite the land that petulant revolutionaries tore apart. Wow. This yeah. is a peacekeeping operation. <laughs> We're trying to reunite the people. Under our guidance. It's a special operation into northern Molthun. The conflict would just end if everybody would just reunite under Molthun, guys. Right? Come on. This sounds like Nermathos is like your teenage kid that like ran away. And you're <laughs> like, if you just come home, it will be fine. Yes. What's closer to the truth in this case, uh, Ryan, you can correct me if I'm wrong as uh, standing in for Molthun. Sure, sure. <laughs> uh, they're currently in their Chiliax Taldor era. Of course, Where yes. they want to expand. Yes. They love their imperial ways. Uh-huh. They want other people to experience their imperial ways, and they want to explore <laughs> all over the place. Well, yeah, it's our it's our right as a, within the last 50 years being born nation, <laughs> yes. to explore everywhere else. Yes. Mm. The problem, however, is where they are located. So they are settled nicely with Druma to the east. Don't want to fight them. Don't want to fight them. Uh, the Menador Mountains to the south. Not really worth it. That's kind of a pain. And then on the other side is Isker. So, like, what do you want to do with that? <laughs> or, or orphans? <laughs> you do need a bigger army. And <gasps> Ooh, that's true. Yeah. But attacking Isker is kind of like attacking Cheliax sure. to an extent. And they obviously want nothing to do with the Nidalees and Chelish devils and torture yeah. to the west. So that kind of leaves the north. Literally only one option. Yes. Mm-hmm. They can. They, they don't really want to cross over Lake and Carthen for obvious reasons. Sure. So they are basically their whole thing is now like, well, we need we want to expand. We got one route, and got that's through Nermathos. Okay, okay. Does this sound right? Yeah, obviously. I mean, it's still our country anyway. They're just yeah. they're just they're squatting. That's they think fair. they have squatters' rights, but that's not true. <laughs> need to get the sheriff. Excuse me, <laughs> you need to leave. We're you're evicting the squatters. So on Nermathos, what they would say if you ask them, why are you continuing to fight Molthun after all this time? is they would say they wish nothing more than freedom from the greedy imperialist grasp. Just let me live my life. (laughs) What's closer to the truth is, actually, that's kind of it. The thirst for freedom really is what makes them keep fighting. Uh, At this point, it's become kind of a stubborn nation pride thing. You can't control me. Yes. (laughs) I won't pay your taxes. (laughs) Yes. It kind of goes even beyond just like fighting Molthun and and external threats. Uh, This kind of like, thirst for freedom extends even within their own people. Uh So a a sentence I read while researching in uh, the book I really liked was that each Nirmathi homestead is a castle unto itself. They should probably join the River Kingdoms. I think they would do better over there. (laughs) The problem with the River Kingdoms implies that is, is that 
there are kingdoms in the river kingdoms that are ruled by people, and they don't like that. Sure. <laughs> so they are against any whiff of authoritarianism or authority. Oh boy. <laughs> and so organizing people towards a common goal is kind of impossible. Oh boy. Huh. Um, the only thing that will unite the people of Nermathos are uh, something that threatens that freedom. See, Molthun. So they basically kind of begrudgingly join together to fight Molthun because they know what's at stake. Sure. They can all agree that Molthun sucks. Yeah. Okay. And in their case, just how Molthun's location makes it suck for imperialist expansion, Nermathos has kind of similar borders. They have the the Mindspin Mountains, Mountains to the <laughs> west. They have the lake to the east. They, they have Belkson up north. Or, well, they have the Gravelands up north, which is kind of a problem now. But it, for a while, it was last wall. So, like, they're kind of in a good spot yeah. to not be attacked and don't really need a lot of organizing force. Hmm. With that being said... Does that sound right to you, Nermathos? Nermasam? Again, chaos Nermasam. screaming really sums up what we're doing here. <laughs> yes. Not a lot of a plan. Not a lot of authority. We'll set some stuff on fire. I, sure. I feel like Nermath. Let's get. But to- we love the forest. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> so a history continues. So in 4697, almost 50 years after the end of the Freedom War, uh, or the Goblin Blood Wars. Sure. So we talked about that in Isker, but mm-hmm. reminder, there's basically a ton of hobgoblins and goblins that ravage Isker for four years. Great. Mm-hmm. Yes. So at the conclusion, in 4701, it drives many of the remaining hobgoblins north into the Menador Mountains and Molthun. So Molthun then starts employing skilled hobgoblins as mercenaries. Ah, I'm going to build that army. <laughs> there it is. Yes. We'll come back to that. 4686. Ding, ding, ding. Molthun seizes Tamarin. Woo! <laughs> Again? The fifth and final time Molthun gets uh, seizes Tamarin, but they get frustrated at how difficult it is to maintain hold of the city, so they burn it down. Oh, I'm not. If I'm Molthun, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> They're like, <laughs> screw if, this city. If we can't have the city, no one can. So yeah. they burn down the city. Yeah, yeah. Again, there had to be another place on the coast of this giant lake that you could have an outpost. It's yeah. about sending a message. <laughs> <laughs> And speaking of sending message, almost to spite the Molthuni people, Nermathos spent the next year rebuilding <laughs> Tamarind from the ground up. Oh, jeez. <laughs> At this point, Molthun threw up their hands and abandoned any efforts to retake the city. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah they're just yeah, like, you know what? Keep it. You can keep it. It sucks anyway. <laughs> we never wanted it in the first place. Lies. A- Twelve years later, in 4699, Molthun starts building a massive border fortress that's now known as Fort Ramgate. Oh. Amid the const- oh, I like this name. Yes, amid the constant changes of territorial control. It would be finished in 4711. Ramgate. So, yes. Uh, it gets its name because of the amount of times the Nirmathi soldiers tried to destroy its gates by using rams. Ha-ha. They were not successful. Yeah, we don't have tactics. Again, we're, you know, <laughs> chaos screaming. Yes. So. In 4703, uh, the Fangwood Keep is lost. So remember this fort that was kind of on the border at the time between Nermathos and Molthun? Mm. Uh, mm. Molthun loses control of the Fangwood Keep, and Nermathos pushes several dozen miles south. Ha-ha! So expands yeah, but their we territory. have Ramgate now. We don't, we don't need Fangwood Keep. Yeah, you, they kind of run up. Ramgate is south by a couple uh, dozen miles yeah. of... Uh, Fangwood Keep. So we'll build our own city with hookers and blackjack and more <laughs> gates. Yes. As a quick aside, a couple years later, um, in 4705, the Pathfinder Society founds a lodge in Tamarin. Aha! Uh-huh, they chose us. In response, Molthun declares the Pathfinder Society enemies of the state oh, and refuses to work. With terrorist them. collaborators, <laughs> grave robbers. We will not have them in our city, in our nation. I mean, depending on where you're at, that's not entirely wrong. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> So that kind of brings us to 4715, the Ramgate Massacre. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Where hobgoblin mercenaries at Fort Ramgate, they slaughter over 90% of an invading Nirma- Nirmathi force. Oh, no. And then, against Malthuni policy, they turn on civilian support camps in Uh-oh. the nearby woods. Oh, man, Uh-oh. this is bad for everybody. Uh-oh. Well, it's, it's uh, Nirmathi. Oh, no, it's, it's mostly bad for you. Yeah. <laughs> Dang it, it's mostly bad for me. <laughs> yeah, I thought that at the same time, like, oh, they went both. And I'm like, no, it's it's the Nirmat, like, basically, oh. Nirma, N- Nirmathos had some, like, civilians in supporting These the war These camps effort. were harboring terrorists. 
Guerrilla fighters, they're all enemy combatants. Yeah. Oh to be fair, at this point, Molthun themselves are kind of like, oh, no. <laughs> they went too far. A lot <laughs> of people were real angry about this. I may have accidentally <laughs> a massacre. Yes. So because of uh, because of this, the Nirmathi dubbed that the Ramgate Massacre. Sure. Uh, yeah. And attacks against the fort have slowed in the recent years. Well. <laughs> so we're not going to get into it this episode, but a few years later, Hobgoblins would then lead what's called the Iron Fang Invasion. And there's actually an adventure path of the same name um, to create the current Hobgoblin nation of Oprak. We're not going to get into it this episode. I think we'll do an adventure guide for the Iron Fang invasion. Are they invading Molthun or are they invading Nermathos? Yes, they're doing both. Oh, yeah, bite the hand that feeds you. I may have made a mistake. (laughs) Yeah, You created a monster. (laughs) So the current nation of Oprak, which is kind of like a second edition, one of the nation, is like west side in between Nermathos and Molthun. Yeah. Up against the Minesman Mountains. Okay. But let's talk current state of the nations. Molthun, it's a military oligarchy, as if you couldn't tell. Aha. Uh-huh. It's ruled by an imperial governor who's chosen by the Molthuni Imperial Army. Cool. We're an um, empire. Remember that. Yes. It's, mm-hmm. You could say it's not the greatest form of government, but it's efficient. Sure. Um, there are nine general lords that we talked about that each tend to certain areas of the country and also choose. They're the ones who choose a new imperial governor if the previous one dies. Okay. Uh, sure. Because it's a position held held for life. As inhabitants of Molthun, it's primarily occupied by Chalaxian humans, divided by a rigid class s- system that separates people into two categories, imperial c- citizens and laborers. Mm, don't love that. Think of citizens as kind of the elite. Yes. They live in cities, the larger towns, and they kind of live lives of wealth and privilege. The laborers are basically indentured servants Ew. who labor in farms and forests in the rural, in the rural areas of Molthun. I uh, don't love that. Yep. Uh, laborers have been told they should take pride in their work <laughs> and, they, and recognize how important they are to this country. And a lot of them do. You know, a lot of them are proud of what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But in reality, they don't. Get to lot experience a lot of the labors of their work. Uh, when you sacrifice your fifth child to the mines, remember it is all part of the war effort to yes. take back the northern territories. Oh boy! Yes. Recently, though, they have created a path to citizenship for laborers. Any laborer that serves five years in Molthun's armies can become an imperial citizen. Oh well, that's helping your army. And you problem. too should join the military. Yes. Uh, it was basically created to swell the army's ranks. Perfect. So kind of works. Okay. I mean, it's not a horrible deal, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. Nermathos, it's technically a meritocracy, but the government is, te- is termed very loosely here. Uh, they love their freedom so much that there's no strong central government and most decisions are held at the lo- local level. Where River Kingdoms is kind of a di- disparate area of like separate kingdoms and t- cities, Nermathos is more kind of like a frontier country. Mm. Uh, it's mostly small towns. Everything's kind of handled locally. There's tons of different laws. Like, I mean, River Kingdoms West is not too yeah. unrelated. River Kingdoms mi- mixed with some Andoran freedom up in here. It's um, like the wild, wild west up in here. It, it kind of is. Okay, yeah. The only national authority figure is the forest marshal, and it's the commander of its quote-unquote military, but he also guides foreign relations. They're voted on once every four years by, like, a collection of cities. Okay. Hmm. The army is more of a combination of multiple bands of Nirmathi who kind of just travel town to town fighting injustice. So Freedom! Yeah, right? (laughs) Where would you guys like to freedom today? (laughs) Yeah, so the people who live in Nirmathos are primarily humans of Chalaxian and Varisian descent, but they tend to judge creatures by their actions and not their ethnicity, which okay, good for them. Yeah, And yeah, so since every town kind of does their own thing, the only overarching theme of the Nirmathi people is that they love freedom. Freedom! Freedom! Yeah, and that that's kind of it. Uh, you know, current like they're still kind of dealing with each other. Um, Molthun still wants Nermathos, but now they're kind of dealing with Oprak or Oprak. Mm-hmm. Nermathos has kind of a non-aggression pact with Oprak right now, but that's still tenuous. So, like the Hobgoblin Nation has kind of thrown a wrench into the society, and it's not shown exactly what's going to happen yeah. now. Hmm. Yeah. I get the vibe of like almost like a brother and sister that like just cannot look outside <laughs> their own like internal petty quabbles. Yeah. yeah, it's they're they're penned in by like other powers that be and so like have nothing to do but fight each other. Yeah. It's kind of a weird, weird vibe. 
But I also feel like if Molthoon just gave up, then it would be fine. We wouldn't have a conflict anymore. So like Molthoon's like too proud to give up. Like it's like yeah, Molthoon's too proud to give up, and Nermathos is too proud to. I mean, Nermathos is. Ju- I mean, they're generally my justified. <laughs> Nermathos is completely justified. Yes. in not wanting to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah, everyone wants to secede and be their own thing. So that yeah, that's uh, that's basically the countries of Nermathos and Molthoon. Nice. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. Great, Tyler. Well, appreciate that this story, Tyler. Sam, you, you your your country sucks. Rude. <laughs> I'll burn down your stuff in your sleep, and then I'll take it back for the eighth time. And then I'll build it again and burn it down again. <laughs> and we stay in the cycle forever. The, the history of Tamarin is basically a microcosm of the history of both. <laughs> I take it. I take it back. I take it. I take it back. So while Sam and I destroy and rebuild a city 12 times, we'll mm-hmm. take a short break. And when we come back, we'll talk campaigns and characters. Hello. My name is Bertius Both Sides, and I'm reporting for Galarian News Network, GNN. Tamarin has been once again taken over by Molthun. This counts the sixth time in the history of these two countries that Tamarin has been taken over. And we wanted to get the inside scoop and hear both sides of the issue. With me I have... Giano, P- P- Professor Marshall Giano. From Molthun and... Radica, we don't have titles. We stand for freedom. From Nermathos. So, Giano, tell me about this. How does it feel to take over Tamron once more? It's a simple peacekeeping operation. We moved peacekeeping forces into the city to keep the peace and establish a baseline of peace. There will be no more fighting, no more conflict. The city is under Molthuni control. How does this make you feel, Radhika? This is ridiculous. For the one millionth time, they can't just keep coming in and claiming things as their own. We live here. Oh, but see, it's... We're not claiming anything that doesn't already belong to us. The whole country is already Molthu. Nirmathos is only a a figment of your imagination. You can't own land. Land belongs to everyone. It's actually very clear that there are deeds and pieces of paper that say that we own the whole land. We don't recognize pieces of paper. Uh, 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 Pieces of paper come from trees. I'm going to take you to court. I will show you you the faith of a piece of paper. (laughs) I don't go to court. Oh, and uh, it looks like Gianna and Ronica have uh, in started engaging in a fist fight. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll take you, punch you in the face. Get, get off me. Here. No, get, get off me. Here. Get off me. I'll show you the, the rule of law. No, we don't have those. This has been Birdius Both Sides, reporting from Tamron. Back to you in the studio. Welcome back. Hopefully those two figure out their differences a little more peacefully. Uh, I doubt it. <laughs> Unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> and at that, I believe Sam has a campaign for us set up. I do. So, spoiler, I took Nermathos' side for my campaign, too. <laughs> Stunned. <laughs> shocked. No, Stunned I was shocked. expecting it. <laughs> All right. So the general premise here is that... We are going to be in this Nermathos Molthun conflict. Sure. The party is going to start uh, as a group in the Fangwood. So you're a loose military group, as is tradition for Nermathos. In this campaign, obviously, Nermathos is sticking with their same goal of wanting to take Nermathos. Sure. Back by force. Sure. So along the river that cuts through the middle of the Fangwood, the Nermathi people frequently try to disrupt supply lines Mm -hmm. that are coming through the river. So this is where the campaign is going to start. As level three, you all are a Nermathi group that is trying to disrupt supply lines. And then as you guys level up, the conflict will get bigger. You might have a bigger hand in it. Good luck trying to create some structure in (laughs) Nermathos. That might also be part of it. How are you going to rally together some different people Mm -hmm. to try to come up with a unified front to maybe actually do something rather than continuing this conflict forever. My idea is that the campaign continues to grow until characters are like level 12 to 15. I'm not sure that I'm going to like totally settle the conflict between Nermathos and Molthun. That's kind of Uh, big. It's settled when the party members make a fourth country in the same area. (laughs) Or that. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) They just take over the Fangwood and say the forest is now a new country in the middle. We take over Tamron. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. See, so, yeah, it's a pretty traditional. Well, I feel I feel like countries are at war. <laughs> I feel like it's a nice strategic on a lower on a lower scale because, like, you know, in Ryan's campaign is like global strategic countries. Yeah. This is like 
taking cities, guerrilla warfare, like a lot yeah, of tactical. Yeah, you're going to start smaller too. So you start with smaller goals and then as you level up, the goals will get bigger. So the biggest the goals would ever get would be country to country conflict yeah. rather than like global yeah. conflict. I think the interesting part of this conflict is everything has been fought on Nermathos's terrain pretty much. And I think it'd be interesting to see what happens if like a Nermathi army mm. marches into Molthoon. Yeah. yeah. Or even like a, yeah, like a strike team and like, or mm. if they could come up with like tactics to solidify the border so that Molthoon can't keep coming into attack. I think yeah. that's the other thing is like, if yeah. you can pull things together enough to come up with a strategy where like, okay, why does Tamaran keep getting attacked? It's clearly not fortified well enough. So the party <laughs> can kind of, you know, shift things to do we invade? Do we fortify? Like there's mm-hmm. going to be choices where they can decide what they do with it. And that will probably depend on, you know, what everyone's. Well, I think you also are. have trying to wrangle Ner- Nermathi or Nermathas's army is kind of a feat in and of itself. Yes. Uh-huh. So, Absolutely. Like, <laughs> there could be a lot of things where like you are warring with other factions who are like, I have a better idea to how to do this. Like, mm-hmm. It, it even said, like, the forest marshal sometimes finds themselves like, oh, a group just went off and did their own thing. What do we do? Yeah. And there's a new election for yeah. the marshal every four Ooh. years. So I will probably put that into the mm-hmm. campaign I where like there's going to be an election. Edge. So, yeah. you know, I, I would probably put that a little bit later when the characters are higher level. So then theoretically, if they wanted to be involved in that election yeah. or get themselves elected, that'd be cool. They yeah. could do that. Or if they wanted to back somebody, we could do it that way either mm. way. So, no, I like that. That's cool. This is this is very fertile ground. I yes. like this. I like this a lot. Okay, my character, my first character, because I have a Patreon character, but my character is Yannette. Yannette is a female catfolk prisoner. Oh, she was imprisoned in a Molthuni prison during one of the one of the first conflicts, mm. uh, and has since gotten out and is working as an agent of the Nirmathi government, spying oh, nice. Molthun. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Except. Uh-oh. She's a double agent. Oh. And she's oh. also Jeez. working for Molthun. No, no. So that she's going back and forth, getting information from both sides. Oof. Except oh, she's actually a triple agent. Uh, for whom? I gave her the Taldane Lion Blade <laughs> archetype. So this happened in this has happened before. <clears throat> I, I like the idea that she actually works for Taldor for real. She's like a chaos agent. Kind of. or- yeah. Well, she's just like really, I think her motivation is she's opposing Cheliax. Oh. So part of how I see like this conflict is probably a little bit of like Cheliax is in there and has agents. And, like, it's almost kind of like a proxy war. Yeah, I can see a lot of different people fighting here instead of fighting elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I, I liked the idea of having a character that, I don't want to say above the conflict, but like her goals are just completely Very elsewhere. Very different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, She'll play for Molthun. She'll play for Nermathos. She's not really loyal to either one because she's actually loyal to Taldor. Ooh. Ooh. I like that. And whatever, a lot of intrigue in there. Yeah, like whatever party or like activation like suits Taldor better. So she might work against the mm-hmm. Forest Rangers and be like, oh, well, actually, Nermathos is kind of, it's all coming together for Nermathos and we need to knock them down a peg. So I'm going to like mess up the election. Oh, no. Yeah. I feel like for the most part, that would be one of those like, I would say most of the time, Taldor would probably be on the side of Nermathos. Yeah. But then, like, the few times where you're like, mm, we don't like that, where that's going, let's put the kibosh on that. Like, yeah. And it'd be interesting, I think, to see the character grow, like, if I'm in Nermathos mm-hmm. for very long. I'm like, oh, actually, maybe I don't <laughs> want to fight against Nermathos. Like, maybe I go straight for one of these nations. Yeah. Nice. I like it. Yeah. So that's the first one. And then we have our Patreon character from Aqua Lantern. Aqua Lantern. I have not previewed this at all per Tyler's instructions. So we're going to, we're going to go straight through it and see what Aqua has provided us. Nice. Character's name is Beneth Ben, (laughs) Beneth Ben Bramblebow. Hey, at least it's not a G. Thank you, Aqua Lantern, for not picking G. (laughs) Bramble bro. Ben, Beneth Ben Bramble. You can just call him Ben. Ben Ben Ben. works, yes. Okay. A halfling Ardande heritage. Not sure what that is. I'm not sure what that is either, actually. Uh, A summoner, a fey eidolon. Ooh. And a given free archetype is going to take the bard archetype. Okay. Which I really like. And this is very fitting, obviously, for this campaign. Oh. Please, Sam, help me. The Ardande is 
the heritage that comes from planar scions with elemental Ooh. wood and Ooh. so it's it's from um rage of elements yeah oh okay. well, that's cool so like yeah so you kind of have a lot of fey influence on this halfling yeah okay mm-hmm. so yeah looks a thin and fit halfling with tough wood-like skin Two large maple leaves droop over both his shoulders, looking like shoulder pads, Ooh. while a large amount of leaf-covered vines flow from his back like a reddish-brown cape. Nice. His Eidolon, Skimmerleaf, or Skimmer, is a medium-sized rabbit-like fae with dark red fur. Adorable. She has spines on top of her long, fluffy ears that she can shoot out to attack, and grassy fur that shimmers into fog when attacked. If defeated... She vanishes completely into fog and disappears back to the first world until summoned again. She's like a super cool Pokemon. Oh, that's so oh, cool. That is so cool. Oh, a rabbit shooting. I'm already thinking like, yeah, tell me the backstory. I'm yes. in- interested <laughs> to hear. All right, all right. Ben is a caster who can bring some strong magic damage into battle, plus intimidation to lower enemy morale. Out of battle, he is trained in stealth and survival to be able to scout along his Eidolon, along with his Eidolon. Skimmer has guidance to help the party in skill checks using either kicks or acid spikes from the ranged combatant feet. Nice. So we're getting in there, blasting, shooting yeah. spikes. Summoners are so cool. I Summoners like are it. really cool. I've never played a summoner. I feel like they're a little complicated. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought that for Kineticist, and then... That's true. It's not too bad. Yeah. Okay, how did Ben get to Nermathos? Ben was born as a regular old halfling who was always drawn to the forests. Growing up, he loved chasing animals and leaving food for them, especially rabbits. However, as Molthoon encroached further, threatened their lands, and harvested their forests, he found himself unable to ignore the call of duty. Yeah, Ben. Get it. Get it, Ben. (laughs) He volunteered as a scout, using his familiarity with the woods to his advantage. When he saw a group of innocent fae having their orchard torched and trees cut down, he foolishly charged the enemy. Uh Uh-oh. He killed some of them, but not before suffering suffering a terminal wound. Oh, my gosh. Oh, jeez. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's tragic stories. The Fae repaid him, re- reincarnating him as an Ardande, oh. and one of them offering to form a contract. Ooh, nice. Hunt down the escaped soldiers responsible, one of whom was a high-ranking Malthoon officer, and she would bind herself to him as an Eidolon. Oh. He agreed, and Skimmerleaf took the form of an animal he loved most, a rabbit. Aw. I'm so obsessed with this already. This is so cool. We've so, got a revenge quest. We've got Skimmerleaf, who's actually a oh. super cool situation over here that's like, cool, I'll be a rabbit. Well, and also there's bit. some layers here, because uh, Ben is a halfling. Yes. And I didn't really cover this, but in Molthoon, much like Cheliax, halflings are kind of considered not people like oh, they're basically slaves okay Ew. and so you see like the fact that he's a half halfling and also like one with the fey and like there's a lot of animosity right there oh, for man. Woo! i love it I'm, I'm sensing a little bit of a little bit of murder in our future yes excellent ben's goals he wishes to find the Molthuni officer Arana Stormspear, responsible for the destruction of Skimmer's Grove. That's kind of a cool name. It is a good name. So glad he named this person for us. Yeah. Obviously, we will build this into the campaign Absolutely. and have a confrontation. Absolutely. He hopes to one day be a traveling performer with his idol on after the war is over, Aww. or if it's time for him to retire. Nice. Skimmer is sweet, generous, and a little bloodthirsty. Love her. <laughs> it's but amazing. Oh my gosh. Skimmer is the bunny from Monty Python. The, com- the rabbit of Carnival- <laughs> Carnivarog. I think yeah, is what so it's <laughs> just like flies around killing people. I love this, but fully supports Ben wishes upon his retirement. <laughs> oh. If she gets bored, she'll just like go murder somebody. It's fine. <laughs> Despite typically giving the persona of a tough and professional soldier, Ben is a softy deep down with a talent for singing, jokes, and impressions. Hence his proficiency with performance. Usually preferring to be quick and quiet, there are times he simply cannot resist his favorite way to mess with the enemy, imitating animal noises. <laughs> <laughs> A talent he practiced growing up chasing animals in the forest. Ooh, okay. This includes a wolf howl to get enemy trolls to investigate, a bird call to signal his friends, or shouting a great bear-like roar during battle for Intimidate. Ooh, nice. He also has the fascinating performance feat to amuse or distract someone if his ant- with his antics if necessary. Nice. That's awesome. Excellent. I love the integration of all the different like noises into your skills. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. This like works out really well. I'm really into it. I also like that with this type of campaign, because it's a little bit more broad from the beginning, there's ways to bring in everyone's backstories yes. really well. So when people write cool things like our triple agent or, you know, 
Ben's revenge quest. Yeah. They're easier to like fit into that yeah. too, since it's not like a super complex plot. I mean, obviously our cat folk, my cat folk character is reporting to Storm Spear, right? Like, obviously <laughs> that's, that's Ooh. one of like the connections Ooh. there of like, I, I, am I reporting? Am I not like, Ooh, Ooh I don't know. I might like if if I was the please, GM please, for this, GM. I might also create animosity between you and Storm Spear. Yeah, with maybe the idea that she's a little big for her britches. Oh, <laughs> yeah, like you're so reporting to Storm on... Spear, but like really, you're also. I mean, you're reporting to Taldor, so and you're like, kind of keeping an eye. Yeah, keeping I'm yeah. like maybe check. maybe we don't want her in charge, like from one of those camps. Like sure, so you. You might be reporting to her, maybe, but you also maybe don't like her or have your. I want your uh, motivations to align with Ben's at yes. some point. Yes, yeah. there because I think that could be cool. Yeah, like I'm reporting to her, but she's like maybe she's a bit of a prick, <laughs> and yeah. it's just like very dismissive and like. Yeah. I don't really or care. or she has something that Talder wants, so you're reporting to her oh. to get something, but ultimately Talder doesn't care about her. Yeah, and then maybe you just don't like her from a personal level. Well, maybe she's you know maybe she's got a little bit of devil devil influence. And oh yeah, she's got she's got friends back in Cheliax. Oh, mm. this is so cool. Okay, Ben and I are going to be best friends. Nice. Well, maybe not Ben and I. Skimmer At and I are going to be. At some point, your interests <laughs> will align, though. Yeah. Well, Skimmer and I are going to be best friends. I love it. Nice. I love it. This Super is so good. Fun. Okay. So we got to rank it, right? Oh, jeez. Okay. Are we ranking? Both we, separately. nations separately. They gotta be separately. Okay. Mm. So, uh, Molten, what are we ranking out of? Zero out of ten. <laughs> Can you rank them both out of Tamarins? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll have we'll have zero out of ten flaming Tamarins for zero for Molten. Zero out of ten uh, free, tam- tam- free Tamarins <laughs> for Nermathos. Okay. So Nermathos uh, or Molten first. Let's do Molthun okay, first. Okay, so Molthun. I don't get the vibe that they're evil. I feel like it would be like a devilless Cheliax to go see. Yeah. It's like still kind of not great, maybe? I mean, I guess it might not be too bad. I don't know. I don't get the vibe there's a lot to go see. Even. Yeah. Like they're so focused on fighting Nirmathos that they, they're probably just a very like wartime economy. Like mm-hmm. yeah. everything's... About fighting. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not five? Uh, four or five. I was going to go like lower than five. Four? Because I'm like, it's, uh, there just wasn't enough for me to think like, this is fine. So it might be a four. Because I'm like, it's not bad, but it's not good either. But it's yeah. not like neutral enough that I'm going to like go get a hotel here. Yeah. Yeah. Four seems I, reasonable. I think four is fine. Uh, four out of ten. <laughs> four out of ten flaming tamarins. <laughs> flaming tamarins. Okay. Sounds like a candy. So Nermathos, zero to ten free tamarins. I yeah, I feel like it's also a four. Like I feel I say, like it's I the feel same. Like, I feel like I'd want to go here m- a little bit more because I feel like the Fangwood might be cool to see. But you got the Fangwood on both sides. No, the Fangwood's on the side of Gravelands. It's only in Nermathos. Yeah, oh, I Nirmathos thought the river that cut no, it, they still got no, some the, in Molthoon. No, the Fangwood is Nermathos and Gravelands. Molthoon doesn't have any of it. Oh, okay. So I think the Fangwood might be cool to see. Yeah, know. that's like I, mean, I guess the only positive. It's like I guess you'd go to a national park. Yeah. yeah. I'm like I mean that's at least something to see. I feel like the rest of it where it's like everybody does what they want and we don't have like a centralized government also doesn't. But sound like. do, they, do they have like are there roads? Like I get the I, think, I get the yeah. vibe that it's like a bunch of isolated like the old west, uh-huh. right? Like there's a bunch of towns. Yeah, I I mean I think there's like travel between and stuff. Yeah. It's just like there's no central government. I'm like I feel like the place where People are more likely to, you know, judge you by your actions and stuff. And like, yeah. because, like I, I, I don't see this as like a lawless waste. Like mm, their laws are different, but it's not like a lawless wasteland. Yeah. 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 Maybe th- five, like a, five or a six. I think I'd, I think I might put this at a six. OK. It's okay. like you could see a bunch of different towns. People really their main thing is like freedom. So hang out with some druids. Yeah. yeah. They're, you're, you're not going to like accidentally get arrested. Yeah, I guess as long as you're not pissing them off directly, like it don't be burn fine. down any trees. Yeah, <laughs> that seems to be everywhere. Glary, don't <laughs> burn down the trees. Yeah. Okay, six. I'm good with six. Six. Okay. Cool. cool. So six out of ten free tamarins, and four out of ten flaming tamarins. Woo! Well, good work, guys. Four out of ten and six out of ten. Yeah. Not bad. I think I think it's our first above five. It, 
uh, since we've done the <laughs> started the uh, not awful. Hey, hey, we ended we ended uh, our adventure in Avistan on a positive. Yes, ish. Yes, if we count Nermathos as the end. Yes, if it's technically the end. Well, awesome. Good job, guys. Uh, reminder to our our listeners: we have a Patreon. Uh, again, link in the show notes. Search tabletop travel guide podcast on patreon.com if you want to reach out via email tabletop travel guide podcast at gmail.com our website tabletop travel guide.com we also have our instagram uh, yeah so enjoying the journey so far excited to go further i think we're gonna go I think we're gonna hit absalom next uh-huh maybe do a little bit different there because i know a lot of people have lore stuff in Absalom. There's a lot of Absalom too. Yeah. There's a lot written about it. So, yep, so we're going to do there, going to hit the high seas and then head down to Garoon. Oh Woo. man, a whole new continent. Yeah. And with that guys, safe travels. <laughs>